Muhammad was a very smart man who brought the tribes of Arabia together into a united community after his death in 632. He gave the Arabs a spirituality that matched their traditions and helped them create a powerful empire and unique civilization. But when he started receiving messages from God in 610 during his prayer time, he couldn't have imagined the great success that would come from it. Muhammad believed that the high god of the ancient Arabian gods, called Allah, was the same god worshipped by Jews and Christians. He thought only a prophet could solve the problems of his people, but he never thought he would be that prophet. The Arabs felt left out because Allah had never sent them a prophet or a scripture of their own, even though they had a sacred shrine, the Kaaba, dedicated to him in Mecca. The Kaaba was very important to the Meccans and all Arabs. Every year, people from all over the peninsula went on a pilgrimage called Hajj to perform traditional rituals around the Kaaba. In Mecca, violence was forbidden in the sacred area around the Kaaba, allowing the Arabs to trade peacefully. The Quraysh tribe, who guarded the Kaaba, knew that their success in trade and prestige among other tribes depended on the sanctuary. But they didn't have a messenger like Abraham, Moses, or Jesus, or a scripture in their own language. This is the context in which Muhammad began receiving messages from God that would change the course of Arab history. Many Arabs felt that they were spiritually inferior to Jews and Christians because they didn't have a revelation from God like them. When they interacted with these people, they felt a mix of resentment and respect. Judaism and Christianity hadn't spread much in the region, but some Arab tribes had come into contact with these religions. There were Jewish tribes in Yathrib, later Medina, and Fadak, and some northern tribes had converted to Christianity. However, the Bedouin people, who were fiercely independent, didn't want to be ruled by big powers like the Persians or Byzantines. They knew that these empires used Judaism and Christianity to expand their influence. The Bedouin also felt that their own traditions were being lost, so they didn't want to adopt a foreign ideology that was different from their culture. This was the context in which Muhammad began receiving messages from God, which would eventually lead to the spread of Islam and a new sense of unity and identity for the Arabs. A long time ago, some Arabs wanted to find a simple form of believing in one God that wasn't connected to powerful empires. They looked back to Abraham, who lived before any special books like the Torah or the Gospel. They believed that Abraham's religion was pure and not connected to Jews or Christians. Just before Muhammad received his special messages, there were four men from a group called the Quraysh in Mecca who wanted to follow this religion of Abraham. Some people think this group was just a nice story, but there must be some truth to it because three of these men were well known to the people who later became Muslims. One of these men, Zayd Ibn Amr, even said to the people around the Kaaba, a special building they were circling as part of their old traditions, O Quraysh. I swear by the one who controls my life, none of you truly follow Abraham's religion as it should be, and I do. He wished he knew the right way to worship God. This shows that some people were searching for a simpler, more authentic way to believe in one God before Muhammad's teachings came along. One day, around 610 AD, during the holy month of Ramadan, Muhammad had a life-changing experience on Mount Hira. In the middle of the night, he was suddenly awakened by a powerful presence. He later explained that an angel had appeared to him and commanded him to recite, Ikra. But Muhammad, who wasn't a professional reciter or prophet, refused. The angel then held him tightly, making it hard for him to breathe. After releasing him, the angel commanded him to recite, again, and once more Muhammad refused. This happened a third time, with the angel's embrace becoming more intense each time. Finally, at the end of the third embrace, Muhammad found himself speaking words that he didn't know before. Recite in the name of thy sustainer, who has created created man out of a germ cell. Recite for thy sustainer is the most bountiful, one who has taught man, the use of the pen taught him what he did not know. These words were the first revelation of God's message in the Arabic language, and it would later be called the Quran, which means the recitation. This marked the beginning of Muhammad's role as a prophet and the spread of Islam. Muhammad was very worried because he thought he might be seen as a kahin, 
a person believed to be possessed by a jinni and consulted for things like lost camels. Kahins were not respected, and their messages were often confusing. This idea made Muhammad feel so bad that he didn't want to live anymore. He was careful to make sure that the words he received, now known as the Quran, were different from the poems people wrote. While on a mountain, he heard a voice from heaven that told him he was the messenger of God and introduced himself as Gabriel, who is seen as the angel of revelation in Islam. This experience was powerful and overwhelming, making it impossible for Muhammad to look away. He felt the presence of something holy and terrifying, similar to what Jewish prophets called holiness. This experience left him shocked and scared. In his distress, he turned to his wife, Khadija, for comfort. Trembling and scared, Muhammad crawled into Khadija's lap, begging her to protect him from the overwhelming divine presence. Once he calmed down a bit, he asked her if she thought he had become Majnun. Khadija reassured him, telling him about his kind and helpful nature, his care for the poor, and his efforts to restore lost moral values. She said that these actions couldn't be those of a Majnun. Instead, she suggested they talk to her cousin, Waraka Ibn Nafil, who was a Christian and knowledgeable about scriptures. Waraka had no doubt that Muhammad had received a message from the God of Moses and the prophets, and was now the messenger to the Arabs. After some years, Muhammad became convinced of this and started sharing his message with the Quraysh, giving them a scripture in their own language. Unlike the Torah, which is said to have been given to Moses all at once, the Quran was given to Muhammad slowly, over 23 years. The messages came to him in bits and pieces, and it was often a painful experience for him. He had to carefully listen to the divine words and try to understand their meaning, even when it wasn't clear or verbal. Sometimes, he saw an angel and heard the message clearly. Other times, the message was hard to grasp, like the sound of a distant bell. Muhammad had to be patient and not rush to interpret the messages. He needed to wait for the true meaning to reveal itself. This process was difficult and sometimes made him feel tired or heavy. He would even sweat a lot and sometimes lower his head between his knees, a position used by some Jewish mystics in a different state of consciousness. Just like with any creative process, it was challenging for Muhammad to receive and understand the divine messages. It's not surprising that Muhammad found the revelations challenging since he was creating a new political system and writing one of the greatest spiritual and literary works of all time. He believed he was putting God's words into Arabic through the Quran. We know a lot about Muhammad, and the Quran shows how his vision developed over time. It became more universal as he responded to events. The Quran is unique because it's like a real-time commentary on the beginnings of Islam. God seems to answer critics, explain events, and show the divine side of life. The revelations didn't come to Muhammad in the order we read today but as events happened and he understood their deeper meaning. Muhammad, who couldn't read or write, recited the new parts aloud, and the Muslims memorized them. Later, they were written down and arranged by length. The Quran isn't a story or an argument that needs a specific order. Instead, it talks about different themes like God's presence in nature, the lives of prophets, or the last judgment. To Westerners who don't understand the beauty of Arabic, the Quran might seem boring and repetitive. But it's meant for public recitation in mosques, reminding Muslims of their faith's core beliefs. When Muhammad started sharing his beliefs in Mecca, he didn't think he was creating a new religion. He believed he was bringing back the old religion of the one God to the Quraysh tribe. He didn't want to preach to other Arab tribes and only focused on the people of Mecca and its surroundings. He didn't aim to create a theocracy and didn't see himself having a political role. His job was to warn the Quraysh about the dangers of their situation. His message was hopeful, not scary. The people he talked to already believed in God, who they called Allah, the creator of the universe. They thought he was the same God worshipped by Jews and Christians. The problem was that the Quraysh didn't fully understand the meaning of their belief in God. They knew God made everything, sent rain to make the earth grow, but they still thought they were the center of the universe 
and didn't depend on God as much as they should. The early verses of the Quran encouraged them to realize their dependency on God and appreciate the many things they still owed to Him. They needed to understand that they were not self-sufficient and that their success didn't make them independent of the Creator. God creates a person from a tiny drop of sperm, decides their nature, and helps them throughout their life. He eventually takes them to the grave and may bring them back to life if He chooses. People haven't fully followed what they've been taught about their responsibilities. The Quran reminds people to think about where their food comes from. God provides water, makes the earth grow, and gives them plants and crops to eat, for both humans and animals. In the Quran, an unbeliever isn't someone who doesn't believe in God, but someone who is ungrateful towards Him. They know what comes from God but refuse to show gratitude. The Quran wasn't teaching the Quraysh something new. It was reminding them of things they already knew and making them clearer. The Word of God was having a conversation with the Quraysh, not giving orders. For example, it reminded them that the Kaaba, a sacred place, was a big reason for their success, which was really due to God. The Quraysh people liked to walk around a special shrine, but they got too focused on themselves and their wealth. They forgot the true meaning of this ancient ritual which was to see the signs of God's goodness in nature. Muhammad wanted to help them remember, so he asked his followers to pray twice a day. This prayer, called Salat, was a way to change their actions and thoughts. Over time, this new religion became known as Islam, which means to surrender to God. The Quraysh were shocked when they saw the first Muslims praying like this, because it looked like they were acting like slaves. The Muslims had to pray in secret places because of the Quraysh's disapproval. This reaction showed that Muhammad understood the Quraysh's hearts very well.